Hey guys, welcome back to the Invader PC Studio. As you may or may not have noticed, our background is fairly different compared to what you have seen previously. And that's actually because we do have a lot of things secretly in the works. So make sure to check out on what our latest happenings are in our social media down in the description box down below. But before we get to the main event for today, I want to give Asus a huge shout out for actually helping us create this back wall. As you can see, Asus, and we even have our own logo right here. But back to the main topic. So, as we all know, today's a new day, and with that, we have a new GPU. That's right, folks. Another new GPU following AMD's RX 6500 XT. This time, we have a new GPU from Team Green. In fact, we have two GPUs. The RTX 3050 and the RTX 3090 Ti. So today, we'll be taking a look at the RTX 3050. As of which card we're taking a look at, we will be taking a look at the ASUS ROG Strix variant of the 3050. That's right, this card. Oh shit. <laughs> This GPU right here. So I think that's enough talking and let's take a look at what's inside. I'm just joking, we actually already did the unboxing and this box is empty. So the GPU is actually right over here. But before we take a look at a, or rather a closer look at this GPU and see how it differs from its other Strix brethren, why don't we take a look at how we did the unboxing. We're back from our unboxing sequence. Let us know how do you guys enjoy it. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more epic sequences just like this. Or if you prefer our previous unboxing styles, like the TikTok variant for our RX 6500 XT. But back to the 3050, let's take a look at how this actually differs from its other Strix variant before we take a look at the technicality of the RTX 3050. So one of the things that you may or may not notice with this card at first is that why is there a gap in my GPU, Asus? Don't you find it strange? But I mean, in all seriousness though, Asus actually made a few subtle changes when it came to the design of their RGB. So previously, if you take a look at the front portion of the GPU itself, right, you will actually notice that the RGB portion, as like I said, is full, but there is actually a metal piece in the front with the RG logo that actually covers the RGB. Asus has actually decided to actually incorporate the logo into the LED itself. So that way you do have an entire strip that you can control, which is pretty cool. And apart from that, they have actually taken a different design approach to the backplate itself. So previously, for most Strix GPUs, you do have an alternate backplate. But for this, they actually decided to keep a single backplate design with an RGB logo. So those so are some of the cool, distinctive, aesthetic features of the new Strix variant. But I think that's enough about the aesthetical changes. Let's take a look at the technicality of the RTX 3050. When it comes to the RTX 3050, we do have a lot of good signs, but at the same time, there are a few questions that need to be answered before we can consider if this card is a good card or is it another flop from NVIDIA. So one of the things to consider is that the 3050 is supposed to be the prodigy, the promised one, the one that leads gamers out of the darkness when it comes to budget entry GPUs. 
So the 3050 is meant to be that entry-level GPU that allows you to fully utilize the Ampere architecture while at the same time utilizing NVIDIA's technologies, things like DOSS or ray tracing. But when it comes to this whole price inflation, it's hard to say where the 3050 will stand. So if we take a look at what we do know at least right now, which is the technical specs, we can see that the 3050 does look quite appealing because when it comes to the CUDA cores, especially against its predecessors, we can see that the 3050 actually shares the same amount of CUDA cores as its predecessor, the 2070 Super. But when we take a look at its memory interface, or rather its video memory, we can see that both the 2070 Super and the 3050 share the same amount of video memory. But that story doesn't end there. In fact, if we dive a bit deeper, we can see that the 2070 Super does have faster VRAM at about 256 bits when it comes to its memory interface bandwidth. But if you take a look at the 3050, we do see it actually be lower. In fact, the 3050 is about half of the memory interface bandwidth at 1 to 8 bits. So does that mean that the 3050 will not perform as fast as the 2070 Super? It's hard to really say considering right now we don't exactly have the drivers. So let us know in the comment section down below if you want us to take a closer look at the RTX 3050, especially when drivers do come out. But apart from that, there is more good news. So if we compare it to the 2060, at least the relaunch variant of the 2060, we do see that there is about uh, more than a 10% improvement, I'll say, when it comes to the CUDA core amount for the 3050. But like I said, when it comes to his video memory, however, that's the part that is actually quite confusing. Because even the re-release 2060 does have a faster memory bandwidth interface compared to the 3050 at 192 bits. So it's really hard to see where the 3050 is supposed to be. And last but not least, there is one question that is quite puzzling as well. So as we know, the 2060 is supposed to be the gateway to VR gaming especially considering the 2060 is supposed to be a lower tier card than the 3050. But NVIDIA themselves has actually not classified the RTX 3050 as a VR-ready card. Is that because there is something missing in the card? Or is it because drivers are not up to date? It's hard to say. But I believe this is one of the things, that especially if you are deciding to go into VR, to consider. Unfortunately, when it comes to the 3050, it's hard to really give you a proper conclusion because like I said, when it comes to the actual technical spec list of the card itself, it does look quite promising. But right now in this GPU apocalypse that we are living in, where prices are like out of this world, right? It's hard to really say how the RTX 3050 will pair up. If its pricing is just and it's close to what it's said to be, then yes, I would say that probably the RTX 3050 would be a good card to go for. But if it is significantly higher, well, that's really hard to say. As of right now, the only thing we can do, I would say, is to wait for its actual release and see how its performance actually stands up. Like I said, remember, let us know in the comments down below if you want us to take a look at the 3050. But I hope this gives you a better insight, at least when it comes to the technical specs of the 3050. And let us know if you enjoyed this video or if you thought this was a complete waste of time. But before we end the video, I just want to say that, you know, do remember to check out our social media and do follow them because we will be actually announcing something very shortly in the near future. And before we go, just want to give a huge shout out to ASUS again for letting us have the GPU early before launch and at the same time helping us do the back wall. It's actually been a great experience working with ASUS. So just want to give them a huge shout out for that. And I that's really about it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.